Once you have logged in to Design Tool 2.0 and entered the project information, you can start entering the project details. For this example project, we will be using the StormTech MC3500 chamber. First, enter the required design volume. Then, enter the available length. Next, enter the available width. Finally, enter the base of stone elevation. Once these design parameters have been entered, click the Generate Design button. When prompted, click Yes. This will automatically generate a chamber layout. With the mouse arrow in the drawing window near the chamber array, the user can hold down the scroll wheel on the mouse to move or pan the layout around in the drawing window. By selecting the blue triangle, you can also move the chamber array around in the drawing window. To rotate the chamber bed, select the handle extending from the bed, and while holding down the left mouse button, move to rotate. Please note that when the drawing is exported, the orientation of the layout will always print horizontal with the blue triangle at the 3 o'clock position. Now that the layout is complete, you can insert a background image. Click on the background and tool panel and select Import PDF. In the Open Dialog window, select the background PDF that you want to insert. We can scroll through the PDF pages and select the appropriate sheet. If the incorrect page was selected, you can repeat the process with a different image. This will override the existing image. For this design, Sheet 2 is being used. Once the correct sheet is inserted, the next step is to scale the background image. This is done by selecting the Set Scale button. Next, trace the red line across the scale bar, clicking once to start and once to stop the line. Please note that this is a relative scale. In this example, the red line is drawn across the entire length of the scale bar, equaling 40 units. Enter a value of 40 into the Enter Measured Length box and hit the Enter key. Note that the background image doesn't visibly change on the screen. The chamber array will adjust in size in relation to the scale that has been entered. Next, select and hold down the blue triangle to move the chamber array to the correct location on the background site plan. Once you have arranged the chambers on the background, Review the input parameters. Because we used the Generate Design button, if the volume required did not fit into the length and width parameters as previously entered, an error message would appear and the volume listed across the top of the page would be outlined in red. On this design, there is a yellow outline around the volume box, meaning that the volume of this layout is larger than the required volume. You can manually remove chambers one at a time to get closer to the required volume. Within the Components panel, there are options to add or remove chambers and end caps, as well as adding the individual accessories such as inlet manifolds, outlet manifolds, insertities for side connections, and inspection ports. To remove chambers, click Remove Mode, then click Select Component Chamber. Hover the mouse over the chamber array and it becomes transparent. In this example, there is a light post under some of the chambers. Click on the individual chambers you want to remove from the array. As the chambers are removed, the volume will update in real time. If the required volume goes below what was entered in the system parameters, the box will be outlined in red. Adding chambers is as simple as removing them. Simply click Add Mode and then click Select Component Chamber. Next, select the Phantom Chamber outline where you want to add chambers in. Once the layout and desired number of chambers is complete, click the Autofill End Caps button. This will change the end caps in the appropriate locations on the bed. For this example, there is also an insert -a -t side connection for a small roof drain and an inspection port. To add these, navigate to the Add Remove Accessories section, then click on the insert -a -t button. 
Next, select the chamber where the insertity is to be added. Repeat the same process to add an inspection port. Please note that these are simple on-off toggles. To remove them, simply click on the chamber again and they will be removed. The user can also toggle the isolator row on or off at any inlet point. First, click the Select Row Isolator Row button and circles will appear at the end of the rows. A solid blue circle indicates an isolator row. When a circle is selected, a dialog box pops up giving the user the ability to toggle the isolator row on or off for that row. The isolator row will remain on in this example as it is recommended that StormTech systems be designed with an isolator row for inspection and maintenance. Once finished, verify the volume, length, and width are all still within the requested parameters. The last step is to save the project. Click the Project Information panel and then click Save Current Project. Once the project is saved, two types of reports can be accessed. To request the system specifications, click the Drawings and Reports panel and then click Print System Specifications. A window will pop up showing the user inputs, the results, and a cross-section of the selected chamber model. In the same panel, you can also click Email Drawings and Reports and then click Request. Once requested, the email will typically arrive between 5 and 15 minutes. For larger systems, it may take longer. The email will contain a zip file download containing both the PDF and an AutoCAD drawing. The email will contain a summary of the inputs we entered as well as the results for the project. You will also find an 800 number and email address to contact if you have any questions or need additional modifications to the design. To obtain the drawings, click the download link. The drawing package will be downloaded as a zip file. It is important that all the files be extracted to make sure the overlay is correctly linked to the AutoCAD drawing. Click on the PDF or the AutoCAD drawing to open and view your drawing package. The drawing provides an outline of the components labeled and summarized in the parts table. This table also contains the maximum inlet and outlet flow rates that the manifolds and pipe connections have been sized to handle. If the flows on your project are higher than these flows, it is recommended that you call the 800 number in the email to contact ADS Engineering Services who can assist in adjusting the size of the manifolds for your project-specific flow rates. This sheet also contains a summary of the number of chambers, end caps, and the volume provided. The remainder of the sheets contain all of the pertinent details based on the parts and accessories that have been added to the project. The last page contains an overlay that shows the chamber system on the background image that was inserted. To open a previously completed project, click on the Project Information panel and click Manage Projects. Navigate to the project you wish to modify and double click on the file. Once the drawing is open, click on the System Parameters panel. Enter a new volume of 15,400 cubic feet in the Storage Volume field. Once this is entered, Notice that the volume field in the results bar across the top of the tool is outlined in red as the current layout does not meet the requirements of the new volume. To quickly account for this new increase in volume, you could add a new length and width and select Generate Design. To show more advanced features of the tool, the next step will show you how to manually add the chambers in the Components panel. The available areas to expand the chamber array are over to the left and down into this area shown on the screen. This will require a non-rectangular shape. To do this, go to the Components panel and select Add Mode as well as Select Chamber Component. To start adding, first you need to click on the blue triangle to activate the white handles. Next, 
Select the white handles and stretch them to expand a phantom outline array of chambers. The phantom chambers in the array are on-off toggles for adding and removing chambers. If the system shifts, simply shift it back by selecting the blue triangle. With the Add mode activated, start adding chambers to the bed. Click on any of the phantom squares to add chambers. Notice in the results bar that as chambers are added, the volume and chamber counts increase. Continue to add chambers until the required volume is reached. The addition of an outlet structure and manifolds later will increase volume as well. For now, the volume can remain just under what is required. Select the Auto Fill End Caps button to fill in any missing end caps. Then, under Add Remove Accessories, select the Outlet Manifold button and select the last chamber on the row to add an outlet structure. By adding the outlet, there is an extra perimeter stone to accommodate the underdrain, which has increased the volume slightly. Now, you can see you are meeting the new volume. To relocate the inspection port, select the Inspection Port button and then click on the chamber with the inspection port to remove it. With the inspection port button still active, select the last chamber in the row to add the inspection port back. With the modifications completed, verify the new volume. Notice that the length and width are in red because they have not been updated in the system's parameters panel. Since this is an irregular shaped bed, it is optional to update these parameters and the red outline can be ignored. With all the modifications complete, save the project before submitting. Clicking on the Save Current Project button will override the previous design. Alternatively, you can click the Save as Copy Revision button to save a new file in the managed projects for this revision. Once the project is saved, Click on the Drawings and Report panel and click Email Drawing and Report. The email should arrive in 5 to 15 minutes. If you have any questions or need additional assistance, please call ADS Engineering Services at 866-328-8040 or visit www.stormtech.com.